In March of 1850, a party of miners traveling through camped overnight. In the morning, their blankets and clothes were wet from rain. While waiting for them to dry, one man tried his luck. He found gold in his first pan. Within two weeks, there was a tent city with over a thousand miners. By 1852, the town named Columbia looked like this. Lack of water was the main impediment. In the late summer, the springs dried up and the miners were out of business, having no way to separate the gold from the dirt and gravel. A series of flumes and ditches were built to bring water from the Sierras, and the town continued to grow. By 1858, it had over 15,000 inhabitants. After the gold rush, Columbia neither developed nor became a ghost town. In 1945, it became a California State Historic Park, and its existing buildings were restored and some rebuilt from photos. This tour will show you Columbia as it was in 1858. Wells Fargo ran an express and banking business and had little competition after a financial panic in 1855 eliminated most of its competitors. It also bought, sold, and transported gold. Wells Fargo later started a stagecoach business and took over many existing stage lines. The town had at least four hotels, including the City Hotel, which had a large opera house and theater on the upper floor. Ice cream was served in 1858, but was an expensive treat because ice was needed to make it. Ice was transported by horse-drawn wagon from the Sierras and stored underground, insulated by bricks and straw. The Masonic Hall had a feed store on the first floor, while the second floor was used for meetings of this secretive fraternal society, very influential in the 1850s. A similar society, the Odd Fellows, met in this building. The first floor was a grocery. The iron shutters protected against fire. St. Anne's Church, which had a bell that was cast in New York and shipped around Cape Horn. Alongside was a cemetery. The Columbia Gazette office, one of three newspapers. The Jack Douglas and St. Charles saloons. There were at least 30 saloons in 1858. There were candy stores. Drug stores. A Chinese herbalist. Several dentists. Many banks. This one is still a bank today. Several blacksmiths. Many livery stables. Many mining supply and grocery stores. At least one dance hall. A justice court. A cemetery. There was surely a jail in 1858, but this one was not built until the 1860s. Columbia had fires in 1854 and 1857, and each time rebuilt with more brick buildings, usually with iron shutters. It was not until 1859 that it acquired a hand-pumper fire engine. This schoolhouse was not built until 1860. We've shown you only a sample of what you would have seen in 1858. To see additional exhibits, restaurants, lodging, and businesses in Columbia today, see the map-based guide on our website, columbiaca.org.